In the crushing, he is making new wine. Speaking to all the victims of domestic violence and abuse, just know that Christ suffers with you. He knows what the sufferings, the beatings, the bruising. He knows what it's like. But he does come if you call unto him to rescue you, to take you into a place of his inner chambers, to be in the presence of the Lord, to see the glory of God face to face. He shall come for you. He shall redeem you through the crushing and the pruning. He is making new wine and new fruit. Just remember, besides being a victim, you are a warrior. You've come through a war. But to yourself on your shoulder, you are more than a survivor, a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Your alliance is with Jesus Christ. He commands his angels concerning you. How much good would our Father in heaven bestow upon you? On a personal note, I was thinking about writing a blog of all the thoughts that go through the mind of a victim. I know that perhaps only the victims will understand the rumblings of the mind. And I believe due trauma and many other reasonings, the brain has inflicted a trauma, an injury. I put out programs for sound therapy. Um, sound therapy is proven as a neuroplasty for rewiring the brain. Please follow these sound therapies. They will give neuroplasty which is to heal the brain of trauma victims, even if you can only be five minutes, get earplugs, get plugged into the sound therapy. I will be introducing color therapy. Color has an effect on your physical body, your physical well-being. And I will also give you the association to color and also introduce you to the scientific evidence that color has vibration, frequency, movement into your environment. So let us introduce vibrant frequencies that are good for your psychological, emotional well-being, as well as Connecticut. Connecticut um, basically is a form of occupational therapy. It's also play therapy for children to dance, to move, to jiggle, to be free to incorporate sound and movement together. Those are aspects of life that bring you into the present moment now, which many like to call the, what do they call it in the secular world, thoughtfulness, mindfulness. I call it Christfulness. To bring you into the now moment, as the Hebrew language has no past, present or future, 
They speak in the now moment. And I call it the wow moment. Because in English we speak of a past, present and future. Hebrews speak of now. It brings us very close to the Bible verse where it is said, Let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now it is done, it is finished. Thank you, Abba Father. So yes, starting a blog on WordPress, the rumblings or thoughts or whispers. The thoughts coming from the background of trauma, the thoughts that are remembered and then followed with a dialogue of reasoning and then comparing it to the whisper of the Holy Spirit. So it would be in a three-form dialogue presentation. But to spill the beans, we shall spill the beans. All the dirty, bad, sad, clean beans. And I really want to ask that the audience interact with me. If you are violence that was subjected to covert, overt, coverse abuse. I learned about all these overt abusers. And I'll give it a name. I think the covert, coverse and psychological is the worst injury of all because it connects the mind and the heart which tie and keep the victim in bondage to the abuser. We need to learn how to untie this knot. And I found that no matter where you find yourself today, you would not believe it, but it starts with gratitude for what's left. Because if we concentrate on what is lost, we will beckon and bring in that feeling, that thought into the mind, into the emotion of loss. You will feel loss. So we want to take you away from that part of it. It has happened. It's in the past. Let's get you back into the now moment. It starts with gratitude and sometimes many domestic violence and abuse victims haven't got much to be grateful for. A lot of us have financial and economic withdrawal or withholding of our funds. But what is it that we could be grateful for? List five of these that you are grateful for today. I'm grateful that I can breathe. I'm grateful that I can move. I'm grateful that I can think. I'm grateful that I have shelter. I'm grateful that I have clothes. As simple as that. It could be elaborate. It could be, I'm grateful that somebody sent me flowers today. I'm grateful that someone served me breakfast today. I'm grateful that I have good friends. I am grateful that I have a support structure. I am grateful for the breath that God gave me to breathe. Watch out for the blog. It's going to get honest with the feelings and the emotions. I know that the Christian doctrines don't like to hear many of the emotions that a victim goes through. But I believe that whilst going through, it means you're going and coming through. It's a process. Healing is never a clean job it is messy it can look messy 
Stop living in shame and guilt while you're healing. It's a process. Be patient with yourself. One day you will be up, the next day you will be down. One week you will be up, the next week you will be down. Two weeks you will be up, two weeks you will be down. Be kind to yourself going through the phases and the process of healing. Listen to your body. Above all, try to stick to a routine of waking up, keeping your day busy. What I, on a personal level, have um, incorporated was feeding my mind intellectually because my resources have been cut. So I can't do my arts, I can't do this, I can't do that, my gardening, etc, etc. Which were the other forms of my outlet. I make it a priority to learn something new each day. So I go onto YouTube and I learn about quantum physics. Although that still baffles me, I have a lot of questions. I'm semi-getting it, semi-not. Um, yes, my systems are slow, so I'm extremely frustrated. But I try to also listen to a sermon that is uplifting. Because we all need to feel uplifted and empowered. Being victims, a lot of us felt helplessness and hopelessness. We need to reprogram ourselves when somebody speaks positive as to uplift us. And then to become more educated if you were involved with a narcissistic abuser. Equip yourself, educate yourself, so that you may know better to prevent the pattern and the cycle. You must come face to face with the reality that it had something to do with your value and your worth. And to feel what you're feeling and to allow it because had you believed that you were of great value and worth you would have never have chosen a person in character that would end up abusing you and I think as victims we should start looking at the character of the man does he have values, principles, morals? If he doesn't, turn around and walk away. I think that is a basic foundation to have a look at. I know that society has become fast and flashy with all sorts of temptations that people grab and hold on to and want to use as counterfeit marriages, living together and acting as if the two have become one. It is never the case. It never has the blessing of the Lord. It is not in covenant with the Lord. The Lord cannot bless that union. It is not a union that's been covered by God, but by Satan himself. And it most likely will lead to destruction. The knot that ties the two together is Jesus Christ. For a three rope knot cannot be broken easily. Know your boundaries, set your boundaries. You know, in my healing on the 1st of April, April Fool's Day, it will be a year that I'm living in my place of residence with trying to help the abuser in total four times he took me out every time I extended kindness I was kicked in the teeth of the back 
and I still didn't learn my lesson that this person had no good intentions or motives but somehow I still reached out my hand to try to save him and he pulled me under the water and I drowned. I just want to say to those victims that think they are saving another person it starts with you. Save yourself first. Love yourself first. Take care of yourself first. Everything other than that is secondary. Spend time in the presence of God, praising and worshipping. It got me through many days and it is true. The joy of the Lord is your strength as you sing and you dance and you praise and you just lift up your hand and say, Here I am, Lord, have me. His presence shall surely come down and lift you. I've been there too, in the inner chambers of God, in His glory. And He kept me going. He gave me strength to persevere, to endure, to be consistent, resilient, to stand up for myself, to draw boundaries, to get up, stand up, and say enough is enough I'm fighting I'm fighting back now I'm going back for what is mine and as much as many people do not want it to go into magistrates court or into legal battles sometimes it is necessary especially if the losses and damages are severe it's not a nice part of the whole process as there are many feelings of anger that arise. It might look like resentment and bitterness, but it is a righteous anger because unrighteousness does not come from the Lord. You know, I wonder, Jesus Christ, that day when he walked through the synagogue and he threw the tables over, he also had a whip with him and he chased the people out of the synagogue. I wonder if he used that whip. Sometimes people need to be corrected and punished because they took the mercy and the grace and forgiveness of God. They took it for granted. Have no remorse. Do not want to repent. And sometimes people like this need to be handed over to the law so that the law with its rules can decide what is right and what is wrong. Dear victim, if you find yourself in a day that's up, be up. If you find your day in a day that's down, be down. Be kind to yourself. Learn to heal, listen to your body, and hear for his whisper. He whispers to your inner being, and he has commanded his angels concern you, concerning you, to minister deep within, closer than a brother, a friend indeed. May it go well with you. Stay tuned for my blogging on a dialogue three thought, my thought, my emotion and the whisper from the Lord. Enjoy the blogging of WordPress. I will send a link to one of my articles soon on this recording. Stay tuned and keep your eyes open for this. Do not miss out. And please do comment in the comment section if you have listened to this recording. Dear victim, dear beloved, and in closing, let's close with a prayer. A prayer for the victims of domestic violence and abuse. Have a father, I just ask that your presence will be 
with each of them a befather with the pain, the hurt physically, emotionally, intellectually. Abba Father, whatever the situation is or the circumstance, Abba Father, I want you to beckon down with your hand, command your angels concerning these victims, Abba Father, and be with them so tangible that they can feel your presence, that they may enter into a place of your glory and may the victim know that they are in your presence and before them may a spirit of joy and rejoicing come upon the victims have a father for the joy of the lord is their strength it is done it is finished on earth as it is in heaven the third heaven it is done now on earth so shall it be so be it to the perfect will of our father abba elohim hashim adonai el should die it is well with my soul gratitude equals latitude thank you lord jesus thank you abba father thank you holy spirit Thank you, Holy Spirit, Spirit of Truth. You are welcome in the midst of us. For we walk in spirit and in truth. So help us, God. Forgive us, Father, for we know not what we do. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come, Lord Jesus, come. In the precious holy name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour indeed. It is done, it is finished on earth as it is in heaven, the third heaven it is now on earth, it is done, it is finished. Thank you, Abba Father, thank you, Lord Jesus, thank you, Holy Spirit, Spirit of Truth, you are in the midst of us. We walk in spirit and in truth. So help us, God. Emmanuel, God is with us. In the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be. So be it now. It is finished. Amen.